Hey, welcome back. I want to thank you for taking the time and opting into that form. I really appreciate it, and I'll definitely make it worth your while. The next valuable strategy I want to teach you is called own more of the internet. I know that's kind of a weird phrase, but let me explain. The internet is made up of a bunch of independently published content. If you have a website, let's say you have 200 pages of content on that website, those 200 pages make up a small percentage of the entire internet. So you actually own a small percentage of the internet. Here's how this relates to traffic and why it's important for you to know about and what this whole concept is about. If you were to analyze the top 1,000 most visited websites in the world, you'd discover a really interesting correlation that applies to about 95% of them. Do you have any idea what that might be? I'll just go ahead and tell you. A large number of web pages. Some of these sites not only have hundreds of thousands of pages, some of them have millions of pages. Now why is this important? And why is it often a direct correlation with the amount of traffic goes right by how many pages they have. The site with more pages ends up with more traffic. Now this isn't always the case, of course, but it is when it comes to some of the most visited websites in the world. Why is this? Well, it's because of the footprint that all those pages and all that data creates out there on the internet. This footprint creates this huge opportunity to have all these little things out there, so to speak, on the internet that somebody could stumble upon and then find the rest of that company's website. So think of it this way, every web page that you publish and put out there on the internet is just another avenue or opportunity to have for people out there all over the world to end up finding your stuff. A single web page of content that you put out there on the internet actually provides many different opportunities for someone to find it and then the rest of your site. Someone could be naturally linking to that specific page and people can come to your site that way. The content on that page could get syndicated across other websites on the internet and that's another place for people to find you. And of course, that page can get indexed in the search engines and you can get free traffic that way. Now when it comes to search engine optimization and the algorithms and traffic you can get from search engines like Google and Yahoo, there's this thing I like to call the SEO lottery. And this concept will really drive home this point about owning more of the internet and why it's important for you to have a lot of pages on the internet and why that's the secret to many sites getting tons of traffic. Everyone knows by now that the secret algorithm or formula for Google is a mystery. No one really knows what it is. Well, one of the ways you can get a lot of free traffic from Google and from Google's natural rankings is if you have a lot of web pages. By having a lot of different web pages, it's kind of like buying a whole bunch of lottery tickets. The odds are pretty good that eventually you're going to hit on some of those numbers or at least some of the combination for the algorithm within Google. If you're already doing any marketing online right now, then you know, if you check your analytic stats and look at your data, that you're already getting a lot of traffic from really obscure keywords that you didn't even try to optimize for. Well, this just happens naturally, almost by accident, but it can bring you a lot of targeted traffic for certain long-tail keyword phrases and everything else that goes into the search engine optimization process. Well, by having a lot of different pages out there on the internet, it increases your chances to get ranked for all these obscure phrases that you're not even trying to rank for. So imagine if right now you had 100,000 web pages out there on the internet with great unique content. The odds are pretty good that you'd be getting a lot of search engine traffic just because of the odds of all that content hitting on some of the searches that people are doing in Google. Well, that's a big part of the concept behind owning more of the internet, along with all the other natural ways that people can link to content and syndicate it and all the other value that goes with it. So if you're really serious about doing business online, and you're really serious about generating a lot of traffic and of course generating a lot of sales that go with that traffic, you absolutely need to be putting out a lot of content for your websites on a regular basis. Now don't let this scare you like, oh, I don't want to do a bunch of work, I'm not a writer. The great thing about content is you can easily hire people to create it for you. You can just write a check and they can create the content for you. You don't have to do any work at all if you want to go that route. Many of the most successful blogs on the entire internet actually make a lot of money with that model. People that own the blog and start the blog don't even do much of the writing. They hire writers and those writers actually write all the different blog posts and then they hope to pay those writers less than the amount of money that the site will generate in advertising and that's how they make their money. Well the content concept of hiring people to create content for you kind of turns out the same way if you just want to use it to generate free traffic. Hopefully the amount of money you spend to have others create content 
like to write an article for you. There are some people that actually create articles for like $5 each. So as long as that article ends up in the long term creating more than $5 in total value in traffic, it's well worth it. And usually it is. So how do you go about generating a lot of traffic? And how do you go about getting a lot of pages out there to generate that traffic? Well, you need to do it with what I call a content factory, where you're regularly putting out a lot of content for your business. You're regularly putting out solid, fresh, good content in your market. There's another reason why this is very important and it relates to Google and other search engines. The algorithms, especially Google, really seem to be moving towards the age of web pages and the age of incoming links. By now you probably realize how very important incoming links are to the search engine ranking process. Well, Google seems to be moving more and more towards putting more value in links that are newer and fresher. Like that's more relevant because it's kind of more about something that's newsworthy of recent times and that would be more relevant if someone searched for something that that matched the algorithm. You get the picture. Right now there are tons of people that have really high rankings and they got there by getting a bunch of links several years ago. Well the odds are really good if that company doesn't create a bunch of new content and go out and get a bunch of new links that they're probably going to lose their rankings and maybe never even get back into the top 10. So it's inevitable. If you want to do business on the internet and you want to seriously generate a lot of traffic, you have to be regularly producing content for your business. It doesn't matter what business you're in. Even if you own a shoe store, there's great content related to your business. Whether it's articles on running or tips on you know, using certain types of shoes for exercise, there's all kinds of content related to anything. So it doesn't matter if you actually sell widgets or some kind of special product. There are benefits and there are just all types of things that you can write about related to a specific product that you may ship and sell. The key thing to keep in mind is that you don't have to write this content yourself. I want to keep hammering home on this point because so many people get frustrated. The fact of the matter is, even if you're a good writer, even if you're great at creating content, even if you love it, you still want to get into your budget money that goes towards hiring people to do research and to create content for you and your business. Because you can only create so much content yourself, and the more content you can create, the better. So how do you run this content factory thing? It seems like a, a pretty big ordeal. It's actually not. I teach this whole concept in the Traffic Secrets course, and I break it all down, and it's really not that bad. Let me just give you kind of the big secret of it. You have to approach creating content on the internet like a TV producer. For example, think of the Oprah Winfrey Show. When Oprah finishes a show and an episode, and you know, all the staff are applauding and saying, hey, great show, everybody, and Oprah says, hey, great job, everybody, right after the audience has left and the day is over, she doesn't say this, hey, what should tomorrow's show be about? That's not how TV shows work. They come up with ideas, they research the ideas, they produce the ideas, they plan the guests, and they set up everything for a given show weeks if not months in advance. This key principle is the missing ingredient to most internet marketers businesses online for creating content and using content online to generate traffic and sales. They don't know how to manage the process. In a content factory process there are several different departments that you must have. The first one is the research department. You want to create a swipe file of all your competitors content that they publish all their blog posts, all their white papers and special reports, all their videos, anything. So you constantly want to be collecting all the content that anyone in your market is creating. The next department in the process in this flow is the idea development department. That's where you can take things out of like the research bin from the research department, look at them, and then develop them into kind of your own way to create some similar content that was related maybe to something that one of your competitors wrote about. Remember when we talked about doing the results detecting and finding things that are already working out there online and then just using that to shortcut our success? Well, it works really well with content. I kind of briefly gave you the example of if you wanted to make a blog post and get a lot of links to that post, just go and find similar blog posts in your market in this example 
that have gotten a lot of links and then figure out why and then kind of do something similar. Well, you'll go to your research department and pull out ideas of other content that are related to your industry that would make for some good content. You move those to this idea development stage. You develop the idea of how you're going to actually create content for it or how you're going to pay someone to do it. And then that gets moved into the actual content creation department where it's made. Someone writes an article, you make a video, someone records an audio podcast episode, someone writes a special report or white paper, whatever the case may be of whatever the format is for the content. That's where it's then created in that content creation department. The next part after the content creation department is the scheduling department. You want to create a bunch of content in advance and then schedule to release it weeks, even months in advance. Many people that create blogs are creating blog posts like every single day. They can never take a break from running their blog. They can never go on vacation. They can never really have much freedom because they're tied to doing all this work every single day. Well, the key to being successful at creating a lot of content on a regular basis is to schedule it, do it in advance. Do three months worth, or again, pay people to do three months worth, and then you can relax for three months. But that scheduling part of the process is very important. You'll schedule many things to be published on the blog or distributed to article directories or uploaded to YouTube or other video sites or a podcast that's put in a sequential order, ready to go after the next three weeks worth of episodes. Whatever the case is, you'll schedule it in advance. Well, once it gets to the point where it's time to actually release it, that's the publishing stage, so whenever the date comes up that it's scheduled for, then you'll go through a process of publishing the content, whether you release it on your blog, submit to article directories, video sites, iTunes directory for your podcast, or you know, pushing content down an RSS subscription feed, whatever the case is, that's when you put it out there. And then what happens right after the publishing part is syndication. And this is incredibly valuable online for driving traffic and making money in any industry. There are now so many incredible opportunities to take a single piece of content that you create or pay someone to create and have it blasted all over the place in many different areas. Let me give you some examples of that. Right now, there are some great plugins that you can add to your blog, like a WordPress plugin, where every time you make a blog post, it will automatically post a Twitter post on a Twitter account if you have one and if you know what Twitter is, saying new blog post and it'll say the title of the post and it'll give the URL to that post. There's also a great way that if you have a Facebook account, you can go into your notes section and set up the settings to automatically pull content from your blog through the RSS feed anytime it's published. So as soon as you publish a new blog post, once you have those two things set up in this example, and this is just two of many, it automatically sends out the link and the announcement to Twitter. It automatically adds it to your Facebook profile for anyone that can see your profile will be, you know, have access to it and can be one click away from checking it out. And that all happens automatically. You're just adding it to your blog, but really it's kind of getting added to three different places at once, or at least summaries of it. This is incredibly powerful. Now let me give you just a quick tip in regards to Twitter and using that to make announcements and kind of syndicate at least summaries and links to content that you create. Twitter is becoming a very powerful communications tool. In all my tests, it's currently only second to email marketing. Email marketing still gets more response. It still gets more people to go to a web page or to take any kind of action you want them to. But right after that, very close, is Twitter. It's becoming a great communications tool, and so you can get a lot of great response when you post a URL on Twitter and drive someone, in this case, to like a new blog post. Well, here's a little tip for you if you use Twitter. Of course, if you're going to use Twitter, and you should. Many people post little tweet messages, as they're called, all throughout the day. Well, one of the best things to do is, is if you're going to post a Twitter message that gives the URL to something you want to promote, like a blog post, make that the last post of the day. So that URL will stay in the syndicated windows wherever you have it syndicated. Like, there are little kind of widgets that you can put on a blog that show what you last posted on Twitter. You can actually add the same Twitter Facebook app on a Facebook profile, so every time you make a Twitter post, it automatically shows up on Facebook. It's almost like double dipping, so to speak, uh, with Facebook in this case, because 
Now you have your blog post show up in your notes section like I described, and then there's actually another link to it in the Twitter plugin. So as you can see, the syndication stuff gets very powerful, and it's, once you have it set up, it's very easy to have your stuff just automatically start getting placed all over the place. And it's almost like cheating. Just like I said, every web page that you put, put out there is a new opportunity for someone to find your site. Well, now, if you know how to do it properly, every web page you put out there that has syndication with it automatically gets syndicated like on 10 different web pages or more. You can do the same type of thing with the social bookmarking sites and some of the social news sites. There's just so many different avenues now for syndication. It's very, very powerful, and it's an important strategy of mine now for generating a lot of traffic. But use that little Twitter tip. A lot of people don't know it. Make the last post of the day the URL that you want to promote, and it will stay there in all those widgets or wherever you have it syndicated until you make the next Twitter post. And so if you're going to bed or whatever, and you usually Twitter you know, five or six times or more a day, make that last one before you go to sleep, the one that has the URL, and you'll get the most traction from it where it shows up in other places. OK, I think you get the picture now. The more content that you put out there on the internet, in other words, the more of the internet that you own, the better off you'll be. You know, every unique content page that you create is a marketing asset for your business. That's very, very important. On a week-to-week -week and month-to-month -month basis, as you put out more and more content, the value of that asset grows. Because no one can ever take away that content that you've created. And as you get more and more content, it's only going to create a bigger and bigger result, just like we've talked about in this entire concept of owning more of the internet. So, okay, hopefully you get it. You need to be publishing a lot of content, and you need to be doing it on a regular basis. Let me give you a couple little tips. The best type of content that you can possibly create for your business in almost every industry is some type of like how-to information. Teaching someone actually how to do something that's related to your business and your industry, like a tutorial of some sort. That's kind of the best content, and that's really what most people search the internet to find. The second best, or maybe it could be the first best, depending on your business, or maybe even a tie, is case studies. Case study types of content can be very, very powerful. That's basically where you take an example, a story, of one of your own customers that's achieved great results using your products and services, and you write about it. You create a story or some type of content to express whatever happened, how that person's life was changed, the lessons they learned, whatever they got from it. If you can create that type of content and make it good, solid content that other people could benefit from, not just so it's a testimonial or almost like an advertisement for your business, but it's something of quality that delivers some good value, that can be incredibly valuable for your company. That can make you a lot of sales because as people find this content and consume it, they're just getting kind of pulled in to want and need your products and services so they can be just like that person in the story and achieve their results. Now there's a lot more that goes into this content creation process and really taking maximum advantage of every page that you create. Obviously if you know how to optimize each page for the search engines, you'll be way ahead not only in that SEO lottery volume equation, but also in just standing a better chance at getting each page to rank well. And then of course there's other parts of it, doing proper keyword research and using the proper LSI related theme keywords and all these other kind of techniques that you can use to get every web page you create to kind of have a head start over just any other web page that someone might create where they don't know any of that stuff. But aside from all that, the main concern for you is probably how do I create all this content and I can't do it all myself and you can't no matter how good you are. Well you can go to sites like guru.com and that's a great place to find writers and researchers. Uh, another site is odesk.com which is getting very popular. And of course, you can just do a Google search for like article writer or for research paper writer, white paper writer, anything that's related to kind of what you want to create. And so if you do that, you can find people to create this content for you and help you get more and more content out there to achieve everything that we've just talked about in this video. Okay, well that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I hope you got a lot out of it, and I know I talked kind of fast in certain places, and it was kind of a lot to share with you. But I hope it inspires you now to kind of change some of your marketing so you're going to be regularly putting out new, fresh content that's great for your market and that can deliver great value for anyone that reads it, because that's important as well, and I didn't really get a chance to put too much emphasis on that. It's not about quantity 
so much as it is quality. You want to have both. You want to have a lot of pages, but you want to have good quality stuff. A lot of people have tons of pages out there on the internet that they created with software or some kind of scraper script, and all that stuff's pretty much worthless. Google has all these behavioral methods now where they can see how long people stay on web pages after they click on a search result, and if they leave there really quickly and come back and look for a new search result. Well, that's kind of a vote towards the fact that that page wasn't relevant enough for that original user, and that's not good. Eventually, we may see that there is no more search engine optimization stuff that we can pretty much do because it all becomes behavioral. Google will just use the actions of users and how they vote on things and interact with content on the internet and use that to provide what's relevant and, and what's not. But that could be many years down the road or possibly never completely happen. But for you, stick with just creating good quality content that delivers great value for someone that reads it and you'll be way ahead of the game. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And I'll be in touch soon by email. I'll send you some emails about the Traffic Secrets 2.0 promotion itself and when we're getting ready to release it soon in the next couple of weeks. If you're not interested in the course again, it's no problem. Don't worry about it. I'm going to do my best to send you some other great free content and videos. And hopefully, no matter what, you'll at least get some good value out of those. So thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.